Case 77. Airline Pilots Association versus Eastern Airlines. We find ourselves here in the U.S. District Court of D.C. Facts. In separate verified complaints alleging violations of the RLA, the Airline Pilots Association, ALPA, the International Machinists Aerospace Workers, IAM, and Local 553 Transport Workers Union have sued Eastern Airlines and request both injunctive and declaratory relief. In a joint motion for a preliminary injunction filed on November 18, 1988, the three unions seek to halt the proposed sale of Eastern Air Shuttle operations to Trump Shuttle. They claim that Eastern's proposed sale of the shuttle to Trump violates both Eastern status quo and collective bargaining obligations under the RLA triggers a major dispute under the RLA because the proposed action was not based on any express or arguable contractual right or consistent past practice and was undertaken with the express intent of undermining the unions and violates the statutory obligation to refrain from interfering with certified bargaining representatives. So what's the issue? Whether the sale of the shuttle should be halted. The court determined that the sale of the shuttle should not be halted. Accordingly, plaintiff's motion for a preliminary injunction is denied. Let's look at the reasoning. The agreement with Trump provided that the shuttle could not be resold to any of Eastern's six principal competitors, American Delta, Northwest United, US Air, or TWA, for a period of 10 years. It also provided that for five years after the sale, Eastern would retain a right of first refusal if Trump decided to sell the shuttle to those airlines, or if other potential purchasers attempt to buy it. The agreement further provided that Trump's shuttle would continue to participate in Eastern's One Pass frequent flyer program for three years, and that for 12 years thereafter, Trump would not participate in the frequent flyer program of any other airline. The agreement also provided that Trump would offer guaranteed employment in order of seniority to Eastern's employees in the same numbers then utilized, would establish wages and work rules identical to those in effect at Eastern with full credit for seniority, and would not change existing wage rates and work rules without compliance with the RLA. Employees would not be hired from any other source unless an insufficient number of Eastern's employees were willing to accept the employment offers. The agreement also required Trump to recognize Eastern's unions as the bargaining representative and as Captain John Bavis, an Eastern pilot and ranking ALPA official, testified to assume as a successor all rights and obligations of Eastern under any labor contract or the RLA to the full extent permitted by law. No Eastern employee is required to accept the offer of employment. The choice was entirely optional. <laughs>